One summer, I was laying in a park, listening to music, and then Emerald Rush by John Hopkins started playing. It made me stop, sit up, rewind, and listen again. The main synth line was unlike anything I'd heard before. It blew my brain. It sounded glitchy, weird, and awesome. So I immediately started doing some research, trying to figure out what was making that sound. Turns out John Hopkins had a custom plugin built for him by Tim Exile. Not for sale, not downloadable, dead end. Or could you get that exact sound from just Ableton Live stock plugins? I had to figure it out. And to be honest, it took me ages. But today I'm gonna to show you how to do it in under 10 minutes. Let's jump in and see how it all works. Let's hear the sound before, and then I'm gonna apply these Ableton plugins to get that John Hopkins sound. Boo, boring. And then engage the John Hopkins magic. Woo. Let's figure it out. So the main synth line is some chords and it's a sustained sound. The reason why it's sustained is because we want enough information to cut into. We're going to be cutting the sound up with some audio effects processing. If you have quite a short sound, there's going to be nothing to sculpt with. So here in the preset, I have two sawtooth waves, slightly detuned, filter down a little bit, and then quite a long sustain. So here it is. So on its own, the sound isn't that great. But then when we apply this magic effects rack, that's where it really comes alive. So the first step in the chain is a gate. Gates are usually used to stop noise coming through. We're gonna flip it on its head and we're gonna use the gate to let noise come through. So essentially what happens is every time like a kick drum hits in our side chain channel, it's going to open up the channel and let some noise through. So let me turn on the gate here. Then I'm gonna choose my side chain source. If you look up here, I already have a channel here called gate. And in this channel, I have a rhythm. Now this rhythm is something I just tapped in on my Launchpad Mini. Oh yeah, and by the way, every time this channel hits a 10K subscriber milestone, I'm giving away a Launchpad Mini and a VIP access to all my courses. Just subscribe and you're in. Details in the description below. Anyway, let's get back to it. So here's the rhythm. It's not your classic four to the floor uh, side chain we would see in a side chain compressor. That's because this is the rhythm that I want the uh, synth to play. If I go down to the synth here, open up the channel, I'm gonna turn this flip button off. I'll come on to that in a second. And let's hear it now before and then after again. And then bring the gate in. That's where the rhythm comes. Now this flip button here, I accidentally pressed when I was experimenting with this and it essentially flips the polarity of the gate. So every time the gate opens, it closes, <laughs> as I understand it. It just kind of flips the rhythm round and so now I just really like the sound of it. So here it is without the flip. Let's flip it. Yeah, that's the one. Now the cool thing with the gate is we have the attack hold and release. And we can think of these as like an envelope for the synth. The more attack, the less rhythmic it is. So if I bring the attack all the way down here, you start getting all that little glitchy magic come in. The more hold you got, the more the gate will sound off. So at the moment, we've got it all the way down, which makes it sound glitchy. But watch what happens when I increase this hold. kind of get rid of some of those little kind of accented notes, which I think it's just really cool that we've got the option to play around with these. The release is going to smoothen out that overall sound. So we have amount of glitchiness, how many notes, and then smoothness, essentially. So I bring up the release here. Fantastic. So next up in the chain is sidechain compression. So this is your standard sidechain compression. Turn it on, kick coming in here, and it's just gelling it all with the beat. So let's hear that before, after. So this is before. Just adds that little kind of bit of movement, a little secret sauce on there. Now, if I bring that in with the rest of the track, listen how well that glues in.
fantastic. Now you can also hear down here, I'm putting it on the bass as well. So I've essentially copied all those settings exactly the same and put it on the bass. And that's essentially it. I have put a reverb at the end. It's not strictly Ableton stock, it's a Valhalla reverb. Ableton stock plugin, please are gonna lock me up, sorry. <laughs> it just sounds really good. You can do this with the Ableton stock reverb if you would like to. Now, what's really neat is we can put that in an audio effects rec and save it for future use as a preset. So once you've done this hard work, you don't have to keep doing it. And the same thing here, you can click and drag this sidechain stuff here into your user library. And that's it. John had a custom plugin. You have Ableton's gate and compressor. If you enjoyed this video, you'll probably like this little Fortet trick here, where I'll show you how Fortet creates an entire track app, just one sample without it sounding rubbish. See you in the next one. Bye for now.